The Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering would like to present this video on the deflections of a thin-walled cylinder when subjected to various internal pressures. This experiment is meant to illustrate the deformation of thin-walled cylinders in two conditions, open-ended and closed-ended. Open-ended applies to pipelines, which are restricted from expanding longitudinally. Closed-end applies to isolated pressure vessels, such as boilers, and high-pressure storage containers. This is an aluminum cylinder that we will be using for testing. The condition can be changed from closed end to open end by turning this knob and thus bracing the end of the cylinder against the frame. This pump will allow us to apply pressure into the cylinder, the valve on the side will let us release that pressure when opened, and the gauge on the top will tell us the pressure inside the cylinder. In the middle of the cylinder there are six strain gauges oriented at different angles. These six gauges are all connected to the recording software here. The guide on the side will tell you the angle for each gauge. First we will be testing the open condition under different internal pressures. Make sure that the end of the cylinder is braced to do this. Also make sure that the valve on the pump is closed. The strains on gauges numbered 1, 2, and 6 will be recorded at six levels of internal pressure. 0, 0, 0.5, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, .0, and 2.5 megapascals. Gauges 1 and 6 will record the circumferential strain, while gauge 2 will record longitudinal strain. Zero the gauges like this. Record strains at zero pressure. Start applying pressure using the pump. For the first reading, we want 0 0.5 megapascals, which corresponds to 5 on the gauge here, as its increments are 100 kilopascals. Once you reach each successive pressure, stop pumping and record the strains. Once you've finished with 2.5 megapascals, open the valves like this to release the pressure. For the next experiment, we will consider strains on all six gauges in both open and closed end conditions. First, select an internal pressure to work with we will be using 1.0 megapascals. For the open ends case, make sure that the cylinder is braced. It should still be from the last test. Close the valve and apply an internal pressure of 1.0 megapascals. Record the strain from all six gauges. Then open the valve to release the pressure. For the closed ends case, loosen the screw, bracing the cylinder, as you can see here. There should now be a gap between the frame and the cylinder. Close the valve and apply an internal pressure of 1.0 megapascals. Record the strain from all six gauges. Then open the valve to release the pressure. For the open ends case, calculate Poisson's ratio under each internal pressure, except under zero under the two cases, when comparing strain 1 with strain 2, and when comparing strain 6 with strain 2. Notice that since strain gauges 1 and 6 are in the same direction, Poisson's ratio is relatively constant. Calculate the theoretical circumferential stress. Plot a theoretical stress versus experimental strain graph for locations 1 and 6. The points should be fairly close together. Dividing stress by strain gives us the modulus of elasticity. The modulus of elasticity calculated this way ought to be fairly close to the published value for the material the cylinder is made from. Aluminum has an elasticity of about 70 gigapascals. For the fixed ends test, calculate the experimental stress in both directions under both open ends and closed ends conditions. These are the equations to use when calculating experimental stress with open ends. And these are the ones to be used with closed ends. Also calculate the theoretical stress in both directions under both cases. Finally, calculate the percent error between theoretical and experimental values for all four cases.